So how did I get to be up here talking about this stuff? A legitimate question. I was a writer for many years for the David Letterman Show. Oh, uh, yay. And uh, when I joined the staff, there was already a long-running comedy piece called Dave's Record Collection. And that consisted of Dave Letterman uh, would hold up actual, unintentionally funny record albums. He would we'd play a little sample. He'd have a clip. Uh, I didn't need to have a... Okay. <laughs> Dave's looking over my shoulder. So uh, he'd have a joke after we'd hear a clip. It was fun. Found humor piece. I was the writer going out to look for the raw material. The celebrities who shouldn't have been singing. And I know some people here tonight know quite a lot about that through the Hollywood High Five book. And also horrible, misguided instructional record albums about learning how to touch type and learn how to knit and all that stuff. But I started coming back from these hunting expeditions with some very different albums that at first I didn't really understand what I was getting into. I'll show you, show you a couple. So I've come back with these corporate souvenir records from these conventions or meetings. And they weren't speeches, they were things like, my insurance man. <laughs> that is a musical about selling insurance at an insurance company sales meeting. I thought, well, that's just a comedy gift from the gods right there. <laughs> so right, on, right on the show, it would be hilarious. And we did, and Dave made a little snarky joke. But weeks later, I was still humming the My Insurance Man theme song. <laughs> Diesel Dazzle. This is Detroit Diesel Engine Division of General Motors, 1966. A whole original custom written musical about selling and servicing diesel engines. Again, oh my god, this is too good to be true. This seems like something comedy writers must have made up, but no, we hadn't. It was real. And I think we may have gotten a clip from that on. And again, weeks later, I'm just songs to myself. What was going on? I started looking for this stuff actively, going to record shows, digging through the miscellaneous bins of record stores, and I started finding more and more. And I, I discovered fairly early on that I was at a disadvantage because I had grown up knowing nothing about actual Broadway shows. And so when I found this one, the music from four to five years future, I don't know if you can see that. This is a Ford tractor dealer show from 1959. Oh, that's my insurance man. That's Diesel Dazzle. Yeah. Words that are in color. Diesel Dazzle, in two words, by the way, you get the whole theory of the industrial musical genre. You get the heavy industry and the showbiz glamour. Diesel Dazzle is just perfect. Four to five your future, I showed this one to a friend of mine who looked on the back cover where there were credits, the writing credits, and he said, oh my god, do you know who these people are? And I admitted that I didn't. Turned out, Sheldon Harnick and Jerry Bach wrote Fiddler on the Roof five years after they did their little four track <laughs> Like so many writers and performers, especially in the Broadway world, but in other cities as well, these industrial shows were a fantastic sort of income. They paid wonderfully, but also you would get to practice your craft. You, you could wait tables, you could drive a taxi, but as Hal Linden once said, industrial saved him from having to do that, and he got to work and get better at what he did, singing, dancing, acting, being in show business. Maybe not the exact show business he thought he was gonna get into when he started, but. You met people, you networked, you, you worked with the same people again and again. It was a terrific hidden showbiz world for a long time. So I started researching more. I would track down people, ask them what they had done. They were stunned that anyone had found these records and wanted to ask them about it. These were all pressed, usually a few hundred to give to people who'd been at the show. These were not in record stores, the public couldn't buy them, so they were amazed that anyone knew about this. They were happy that someone wanted to know about it. eBay, oh my god, eBay, when that opened up, America's attics and basements and closets, didn't I ever run the scooping things up for $4 or $3 or whatever? Uh, there was another guy who was trying to find this stuff on eBay also. 
very annoyed because I kept out with him. <laughs> and he decided to find out who I was. His name was Sport Murphy. We became friends. And uh, we ended up co writing a book. The cover of it is up there, by the way. It's in the lobby at the merchandise table if you want to take a look afterwards. Everything's Coming Up Profits, which is actually the name of a horrible little show for a four time company. But it began to combine. It's a rip-off of everything's coming up roses, so you get the Broadway stuff and the, the business stuff in one, and some of these things were not good at all. They were often <laughs> just uh, rewrites or parodies. You take a popular melody and slap some new lyrics onto it that would, that would be about your company's products or the new sales strategy or whatever, but this stuff would be original music and lyrics that was way, way better than I thought it needed to be or should have been. That just conceptually thrilled me. It just did not seem that techy show tunes and data about tractor transmissions went together. <laughs> but I loved it and I, I was finding all I could and Sport and I wrote this book and I thought, well, that's probably about it. What more is there to say? We didn't fit every record in there. We kind of covered the genre, but now the reason we're here tonight is because of the next frontier, which is film. Oh my God, and why some of these things exist on film, I don't know. Because I don't watch them afterwards. Why? I don't know, but boy, am I glad they, 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 they exist. So we're going to take a look at a variety of clips. Some are pretty short, a couple are longer. I'll tell you what you need to know about them. And at the end, you're also going to see a little sample of the documentary film, which is now in production, which I'm thrilled to be involved with. But first, let's get right to one of our early, uh, one of the, the first films, well, if you can read the English language, <laughs> you may guess that it's from Hiram Walker of the Liquor Company. They uh, had a 1974 fall meeting, and they talk about Canadian Club, or CC. They talk about the company president, a guy by the name of Jack Music. They <laughs> attempt a very tricky maneuver, which is executive involvement. <laughs> but you'll judge whether or not it worked out right or not. There's also, uh, and it's 1974, and it looks it, but there is one garment in particular that I think may haunt your dreams for the most time. This is only like a three minute clip. There's more to it, but you don't need any more than this. Let's enjoy the Hiram Walker 1974 fall meeting. <laughs> 